Are you thinking about getting a divorce, my friend? Or do you just wish you could get a divorce? And why? You say, because I don't love my husband anymore, or I don't love my wife anymore. Why should we stay together when there's no love? That's absolutely ridiculous. Let me ask you another question. Is there someone that you're attracted to? Is there someone that you think that you might be in love with? And is this why you want to walk away? Oh, my friend, do you understand what love is all about? Do you understand that there are different kinds of love? Do you understand that there's a love that's a glue that can hold a marriage together, even when you, in a sense, are very unhappy and don't even like your mate? That's what we're going to talk about today. And it's vital for a marriage without regrets, my friend. I'll call her Mary. I'll call him John. It was late, and Mary decided that she'd get in bed, but she wouldn't go to sleep. She'd sit there and read until her husband came home. He must have had a hard day at the office. It was late, very, very late. He said he was going to be late, and she, she expected that. But when she crawled into bed, she didn't take off her makeup. She propped herself up against the back of the bed and began to read. And then came that welcome sound of the door opening and shutting. She heard his footsteps and looked up with anticipation. He walked right past her, right past the bed, right into the bathroom, she heard some noise in the closet, and she thought, it must have been a terrible day. It must have been such a hard, hard meeting. She waited. She didn't say a thing because he hadn't even looked at her. He hadn't even spoken to her. And finally, she heard his footsteps coming back, and there he stood beside the bed. He had another suit over his arms, a tie, underwear, pajamas, and he looked at her, and he said, I'm leaving, and I'm not coming back. I just don't love you anymore. Here's the keys to the house. And he threw them on the bed and walked out. And he didn't come back. His excuse or his reason, which was it? was I don't love you anymore. Do you realize how many marriages are breaking up with that statement? But I don't love you anymore. I don't care for you anymore. I don't like you anymore. If there's no love, there's no sense in our staying together. You know, when I hear that, I think, oh, world, listen to me. Listen to me. Let me share with you the different kinds of love. Let me share with you, precious one, the love that's going to keep a marriage together. I think if we only had an understanding of, of who we are and, and what we need and, and what love is all about, then it would clear our head and it would save us so much pain and so much grief. I want to share with you four different kinds of love. First of all, the first kind of love that I want you to understand is called storge, S-T-O-R-G-E. It's a Greek word for love, and, and it's a love that is a love of a natural affection. It's that affection that you feel when they put that baby in your arms, and, and love just wells up within you. This is your child. It, it's a natural affection. It could be a natural affection for a puppy as well as a human being. It's something that just it is there. It's, it's what makes us kind. It's what makes us gentle. It's, what's, it's what makes us go out of our way for another person. The problem is that we can lose that kind of love. Let me share with you how it's used in the Word of God because it's so interesting. It's only used in the negative. It's never used as just a natural affection. But in Romans chapter 1, 
where God talks about what happens when men know God and they reject the knowledge of God and, and, and they turn to other things and they turn to idols and then they turn to immorality and then they turn to perversion and then they turn to a reprobate mind. A reprobate mind is a mind that has no consciousness of what is right or what is wrong. A reprobate mind, you see it a lot today, is, is a person that sets their own standards. But that person with that reprobate mind is described in this way, filled with all unrighteousness and wickedness and greed and evil and full of envy and murder and strife and deceit and malice. They are gossips, slanders, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents. Now watch, because these are the things that are lacking without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving. In other words, that's a storge, a natural kind of affection with an A in front of it that means it's not there. It's vacated. It's gone. You know, people lose this kind of love many times in childhood. And they lose it in childhood because instead of the mother looking at that child with natural affection, that mother rejects the child or that child is given to another person, or that child is put in a crib, and that child is, is never loved and never nurtured and never patted and never told how precious it is. It's a child that's always pushed away, always left alone, always isolated. And because of that, that, that natural affection is not there. And some of you are married to people like this. You're married to someone that just, just doesn't have it just doesn't have a natural affection. But what I want you to remember is you are married. You're in a covenant relationship with that person. You say, well, what am I going to do? Do you know how hard it is to love a person like this? Do you know how many times I've thought I can't handle it anymore? This person isn't even decent to people. It, it, he isn't decent to me or she isn't decent to me. And there's not a bone of kindness in them, not a shred of kindness. Yes, I know it must be hard and I know it must be hell. But precious one, if you will keep listening, if you will stay with me in this series, you're going to find a love that can override that kind of love, a love that can restore a storge kind of love in a person. You're going to discover all that, but not right now. Because I want to show you another place, another place where this is mentioned, and it's in 2 Timothy. And you know, as we turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I do hope that you're following me in your Bible because, precious one, it is so important for you to see this for yourself in the Word of God. And if you're able to do that, it will make all the difference because God then is going to tie you to that scripture. And at least you're going to remember what side of the page it was on. But in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he's talking about realizing that in the last days that the character of men is going to change. And I think really, as, as I think about this, that this is why so many people are able to walk away. They just walk away and leave their mate in terrible circumstances, devastate them on the way, walk away from their children, walk into the arms of someone else, and it doesn't bother them a bit. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 3. He says, men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy. Unloving, there it is, unloving. Second Timothy chapter three, verse three. A storge without love, without natural affection. He goes on to say they'll be irreconcilable. It, no matter what you do, no matter how you plead, they won't be reconciled. Malicious gossips without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And this is what makes them so dangerous. It says in verse 5, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. It says avoid men such as these. 
In other words, these are people whose character is so bad that it's destructive. And, and you may find yourself living with a person like this. But, but, but listen, there is a love, as I've said before, there is a love that can override this. There's a love that can restore this. Now, what is the second kind of love that you need to understand? It's eros kind of love. E-R-O-S is the Greek word. When you hear it, what do you think of? You think of erotic. That's right. Uh, Eros kind of love is a, it's a pleasurable love. It's a, it's a love with a lot of chemistry in it. I mean, it's a love that excites. It's a love that turns you on. It's a love that brings you great pleasure. It's a love that, uh, that appeals to the senses. It's, it's usually that magnetism between a man and a woman. And, and you know, it's all right with God <laughs> because God put us in these kind of bodies. God put us in bodies that, that respond to touch. God put us in bodies that respond to sight. And, and men are turned on by sight and women are turned on by touch. And so this is the eros kind of love. Now this kind of love, the word eros is never used in the word of God. And yet you know what? I believe it's described in the Word of God. It's described in, in the book of Song of Solomon. And Song of Solomon is a book that is in the Old Testament, and, uh, and it follows uh, the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, or yeah, follows the book of Ecclesiastes. Couldn't remember whether it was Ecclesiastes or Proverbs, but if you had either one of them, you're almost home. But in Song of Solomon, he, he talks about, about being in love. In fact, this was a book that young Jewish men and young Jewish girls were not allowed to read until they were older. In uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 7, he says, How beautiful are your feet and sandals, O prince's daughter. I mean, this is the kind of love that picks up your, your foot and, and kisses the arch and just and caresses it and says, You're so beautiful. It's the kind of love that we as women sometimes dream about having. He says, The curve of your hips are like jewels, the work of the hands of an artist. Your navel is like a round goblet, which never lacks mixed wine. Your belly is like a heap of wheat. <laughs> That's kind of nice in these days when we're looking at flat bellies, isn't it? For fenced about with lilies, your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like a tower of ivory. Your eyes like the pools in Heshbon. Your nose is like the tower of Lebanon. <laughs> that doesn't sound very romantic, but to them it was, which faces towards Damascus. Your head crowns you like Carmel, the mountain, and the flowing locks of your head are like purple threads. The king is captivated by your tresses. How beautiful and how delightful you are, my love, and all your charms. Your stature is like a palm tree, and your breasts are like its clusters. And I said, I will climb the palm tree. I will take hold of its fruit stalks. Oh, may your breasts be like clusters of the vine, and the fragrance of your breath like apples, and your mouth like the best wine. It goes down smoothly for my beloved, flowing gently through the lips of those who fall asleep. Well, this is the Eros kind of love. And you know, it's wonderful and it's exciting, but it doesn't always last. And there's always someone younger. There's always someone more beautiful. There's always someone that is more delightful. And maybe if you thought, I'm in love with someone else, you better stop and check. What kind of love is it, my friend? Is it an erotic kind of love? Is it a love that has made you feel like a young man again or a young woman again? Is it a love that, that has excitement to it and causes you to tingle when, when you don't with your husband or with your wife? Precious one, listen to me carefully. This is a wonderful kind of love. It's given by God and, and it's treasured by God if it's used in the right way. God says marriage is honorable on all and the bed undefiled. But he also says fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. And this is a love that will not hold you in the difficulties. There's another kind of love.
there's a love that that adds not only that erotic pleasure to uh, to marriage, but there's a love that that makes it a, a, just a delight. I mean, you can't wait to see each other. You can't wait to get home. You can't wait to talk to each other. You've got to talk to each other. It, it's a it's a love that that puts a, a, a sizzle in in marriage. It's a it's a love of a best friend, and you say, oh. What's that kind of love? I would love to have that kind of love. I'll tell you when I come back in just a minute. Now, what's that third kind of love? It's called a phileo kind of love. P-H-I-L-E-O is the basic Greek word for this kind of love. This is a love of friendship. Think of the city, Philadelphia. What is it? It's the city of what? Brotherly love. You've got it. So this is a love that is a love of friendship. And, and you know what? It's a love that every marriage ought to have and every marriage ought to be based on. There ought to, a husband and a wife ought to be friends. You know what happens, though. So many times in our society where this erotic kind of love is, is always presented to us, where it's displayed in these larger-than-life images on the television screens and, and on the movie screens and where we see it and we see the attraction and we see the lust and we see the passion, so many times we are so confused that we think that this is love, that this is the ultimate and, and the ultimate expression. And, and because of that, we miss developing this phileo kind of love. When I talk about phileo kind of love, I'm talking about this. I'm talking about the pleasure, the delight, uh, uh, the enjoyment that you find in another person, that, that when you see it, you so delight in them that what it does is it draws the love out of your heart towards that person. I mean, this is the kind of love that two women can have for each other and two men can and kids can and everything. It, it's just the kind of love that I really love you. I really like you. You're wonderful. You're awesome. You're amazing. You're a delight. You're so, you're, you're, there's so much about you that's admirable. Do you realize how gifted you are? Do you realize how talented you are? Do you realize how wonderful you are? I mean, <laughs> when you hear that, does you want to go, oh, really, 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 you know? And, and, and you're just delighted. Can you imagine what would happen in homes all over uh, America and Canada and around the world, if, if when the two mates got together, either when they both came home from work or, or when uh, the husband came home and found the wife at home, and, and, and she would just say, I am so glad to see you. I miss you. You are so wonderful. You are such an awesome man. You know, today I was just thinking about you, and I was just thinking how blessed I am to have a husband like you. I love you so much. Do you realize what that would do for that man? Or when he gets home and he comes in the door instead of just throwing down the newspaper and flopping in the chair, turning on the TV, the first thing he has to do is find his wife and tell her, honey, I missed you today. And I love you. And I want you to know that of all the women that I've seen, there's no one that can match you no one that can match you. You can just see her, oh, well, I don't look good. I didn't change. And, and he'd say, no, I just love you. You're just an awesome, awesome woman. Can you imagine what would happen if we loved each other that way? This is a wonderful, wonderful kind of love. And you know what? It, it's, it's the kind of love that makes marriage a delight. It makes marriage fun. It, it makes marriage uh, everything that you dreamed about and, and that you saw in, in the movies because it delights in another person and it lets that other person know you are delightful to me. But now watch. Because it is a love that is, in a sense, born of admiration, uh, we have to watch it because many times when you're at work 
and and a woman starts to admire you as a man or 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 you a woman starts to admire another man just the qualities or just the good job they did in in on this project or uh, as they set out this budget or whatever sometimes when you start sharing and you start admiring if you don't have that kind of love at home it makes you very vulnerable because finally here's someone that appreciates you here's someone that admires you here's someone that has seen these qualities and all of us all of us need that sense of significance that sense of 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 importance that sense of value that sense of worth and we're going to talk about that not today but we're going to talk about it uh, next week but when when we have that there's a drawing and there's a magnetism and and what you have to do is you have to be careful of that kind of a relationship with someone that is not your mate if you are uh, married it's a phileo kind of love and it's the kind of love that that puts a marriage together now there's another kind of love and it's the fourth kind of love and all i'm going to do is tell you about it but i'm not going to go into it in the depth that I really want to go into it because we'll have to wait and we'll have to do that uh, next week. But the fourth kind of love is called an agape kind of love or agape, A-G-A-P-E. And that's the kind of love, precious one, that holds a marriage together. That's the kind of love that will never turn around and say, I'm sorry. I'm walking out because I don't love you anymore. This is a kind of love that, that has its wellspring, and I'm going to tell you where that wellspring is next week. Because once you discover that wellspring, I want you to know that you will have the power, you will have the ability to love with a love that is unconditional, to love with a love that is sacrificial, to love with a love that knows no end, to love a person all the way out the door and even say, hey, I want you to know this. The door is open if you want to come back because I love you with that kind of love. You know, Storge can come and go. Storge can be demolished in another person, demolished in a child, uh, demolished in a, in a fragile personality. Eros can come and go, and, and, and there's a time when it will go. There's a time. That's why you have all these ads on Viagra and all that. There, there, are, there is a time when, when that love will go. What love is going to hold it then? Well, the phileo kind of love would hold it, the friendship. But what if all of a sudden a person goes through uh, a personality change? What if there's Alzheimer's? Or what if, if all of a sudden uh, uh, there's, for instance, cancer? Or I, I remember before I came to know Jesus Christ, I remember when I went from one man to another man to another man looking for someone who would love me unconditionally. I was looking for the agape kind of love. I didn't know it, I didn't understand it. But that's what I was looking for. And I remember how I would say to a man, and, and excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, but, but this was my femininity. If I had to have both of my breasts removed, would you still love me? What was I saying? Would you love me unconditionally? Would you love me all the way? Would you love me if I lost my attractiveness? Would you love me if I lost my sexual appeal? Would you love me that way? You see, I sold myself, and that's what I did. I sold myself on the basis of what I had to offer as a woman, as on the basis of, of my physical attractiveness. That's how I sold myself. And yet what I was looking for when I asked, would you love me if, was this agape kind of love? My first marriage ended in divorce. It didn't end in divorce because my husband was unfaithful or because he loved another person. It didn't end in divorce because I was unfaithful. 
I was mentally, but I wasn't physically. It didn't end because I loved another person. It ended because there was no filet left whatsoever. It had been damaged, it had been wounded, it had been, uh, in a sense, just demeaned because my husband was manic depressive. But I remember telling my husband, when you love me the way you ought to love me, then I'll love you. How wrong I was and how I wish I had known and understood about agape love. How I wish that I had received that kind of love. How I wish I had had the ability to give that kind of love. How I wish that someone had had a television program that I could have seen and could have listened to like this and could have discovered the kind of love that would have mended that marriage, would have kept it whole, and would have kept my husband from committing suicide. We're going to talk about that next week, beloved, and you don't want to miss it.